teacher and this ordinance will be uh, promulgation uh, will be executed since 2015 and all the teacher uh, from uh, their service must have that eligibility so you can say supreme court has given this uh, order on the testimonial of this ordinance now well, supreme court yes. one of the main contentions that we will be raising is that the supreme court has given retrospective effect which was not the intention of that okay. ordinance also and the supreme court in its own recent decision in the, of the yeah. ninth bench of the supreme court has said that once the appointment process is started it cannot be later changed okay now yeah. uh, if, they, if a new once the game is on no the rules cannot be changed. Can change okay now if a additional requirement is brought at the later stage it can only apply to whoever is being appointed after that okay yeah and whoever is being appointed to pursue into an advertisement taken the, out after it should that. be prospective and therefore it cannot be okay. in fact if we look at the cases which were uh, there before the supreme court also and which had come from the respective high courts the question over there was applicability of tet prospectively to minority educational institutions okay and it was never the intention or it was never the scope of the adjudication in the high court as to whether they should be applicable on a retrospective basis and whether it should be applicable to other all other schools on a retrospective basis That's right. so uh, therefore that is one of the yeah. main uh, 142 has been used you can say the teacher serving it is very oxymoron to say and will be very unnatural according to the law of uh, the natural law a teacher having a uh, age 56 years 11 month he is just uh, he has to clear the tech exam whereas the teacher who has just crossed 57 years will liable will be free from the tech exam sir it is something that uh, supreme court has actually used 142 for uh, just uh, pushing this all uh, uh, yeah, things uh, normal things to really uh, resolve no doubt the supreme court has wide powers under article 142 however there are a number of decisions of the supreme court itself which have said that the power under article 142 should not be used to override any right or any sort of uh, statutory provision okay. and it should be applicable only where there is some sort of ambiguity or some sort of doubt okay over here what is happening is that there is a vested right of the teachers who have been appointed prior to the application of this ordinance or the rules okay and it is those rights of those teachers are also being today made subject to the uh, new order which is now under challenge so i would say that and in fact that is one of our grounds before the court that article 142 the applicability of article 142 should be restricted only to the prospective aspect and not the uh, it should not be given retrospective application okay. where uh, sir where do you find some feel or some space that where we can put our review as supreme court has mentioned uh, that uh, the teacher who has uh, who is not having the tech eligibility have uh, imparted their best of the education to their respective child and they are really signing in their uh, respective career we could not ignore we could not aside such talents but uh, when uh, uh, Supreme Court says that uh, I will have to take some hard decision that all the teacher uh, having service more than five years must have to do. We find something that uh, some space are left that we can just put our uh, counter and our uh, parts that uh, is this something that teacher before 2010 should be free from that. Now this wider question of whether a teacher is imparting good education or not is something that is far more fundamental and perhaps I cannot go into it at this stage. But this definitely we can say that all the teachers who are today affected by it, they are all qualified in some manner. In their, uh, and in their respective, respective they have in their respective advertisements okay. and a large number of these teachers have also obtained qualifications that were recognized and approved by the NCTE itself. Okay, yeah. And today we are now looking at a situation where at one point of time NCTE themselves said that this is the qualification this is the uh, uh, and they took that eligibility, and yeah. today we are telling them that no, that is not sufficient, yeah. we have to do something else. As to the workability of it, now the teachers who are in service for so long, they are now being told that they now need to uh, take a new exam and new yeah, uh, yeah. qualification. It will be very hard for There will be some teachers who would have to undergo a fair amount of training even to take that uh, qualifying examination. Now, and it is required that they do this within a period of two years as to whether it is even implementable or not, that question is uh, looming large and I think for that reason it should be reconsidered on the footing that it be restricted only on a prospective basis. Okay. We find that teacher uh, who has been recruited on, in 1995, uh, the uh, 12th and the BTC, hmm. uh, was the, uh, you can say, saturated eligibility. Yes. In 2004, in 1999, in 2009, the respective advertisement that uh, the teachers who has appointed has fulfilled. Yes. But now, this is, how can you say that an eligibility test, Supreme Court has given order that the test, an eligibility test will criteria, will just uh, uh, figure out as a mandatory thing for all the teachers. It is a, just eligibility test. Yeah, teacher appointed uh, as a 23rd since 20, uh, 23 August 2010, it has been executed. Then how can it would be a universal mandatory thing that all the teachers prior to the 2010 and later on must have? Do you think that uh, Supreme Court really figure out that that is a mandatory and universal eligibility as all the academic uh, qualification is? 
I would agree as to the mandatory aspect, but we cannot agree as to the universal aspect. Yeah. Mm. I, we today we are not getting into the question of whether it is uh, a desirable thing or not. We are saying that to the extent that it is made applicable to appointments made after it was brought into force, we are not getting into that. We are not opposing that. Yeah. Let it be implemented for the new recruitments. Okay. And let it be made mandatory for the new recruitments also. Yeah. But you cannot today set the Since clock it back. Was, it was implemented. And yes, yeah, yes. it should be covered. Also. Uh, something that uh, so interpretation has been made that in 20 uh, the ordinance that has been passed the central government in article uh, uh, 23 to subsection 1 two uh, two subtitle has been mentioned and in one subtitle the trained teacher it has been said trained teacher it is not said the tet the uh, respective states who is not having some training institute must uh, train their teachers all the teachers that has been covered in their state mm -hmm. and in uh, other pair it has been said that the teacher, uh, the government also provide, the central government also provide 4, 452 crore for the teacher that should be trained uh, until uh, 2019, it has been said. So, do you think that our counter, uh, our respective counter has, uh, we, uh, would have, uh, we, uh, was not there when the, all the encounter of uh, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra has been going on, the counter has not been, uh, the counter was not there and to say that uh, the uh, the uh, 23 article uh, article 23 second uh, has some issue to be really figure out yes we were not party to the proceedings so far and it is only now after the order when we are no any notice has been issued no notice had been issued to us and therefore we did not have an opportunity to place our contentions before the court now now that we are coming into this these are some of the aspects we will be placing before the court and seeking that the court now modify its order to ensure that all the uh, rights and interests are balanced from another perspective, we can also uh, show before court that what is the intention of this ordinance and let us even put it in a constructive and purposive fashion that why is it that this was brought in? Why, why is it that the requirement of tech was brought in? Okay. That what was the situation historically before 2009? Today, all the teachers whom we are representing, they are all teachers who have some kind of qualification. But prior to that, there were many states where there were persons without adequate qualification, without uh, the necessary training who had been appointed on contractual basis or temporary basis that the person so was teacher yeah. they, they had been appointed now it was to ensure that those persons are also brought onto some form of formal uh, teachers training it is the purpose of rte was that that there should be someone who, there is some sort of standardized yeah. qualification process who will be able to teach the uh, syllabus as prescribed in a uniform manner across the state. Across the state. So for that reason, that is the reason that there was some sort of mandatory training that was brought in. This does not mean that everybody who was appointed before that mandatory training was did not have the necessary qualification at okay. all. Whatever qualification was there in a recognized fashion, the teachers who are before court today are uh, having and we would, we would uh, stress upon this fact that it is not that these persons are untrained teachers just because they do not have the tech qualification. RTI Act में भी तो ये दिया गया है कि जो ये RTI Act लागू होने के पहले के जो teachers हैं उनसे ऊपर नहीं होगा। नहीं होगा। तो वो फिर ले आकर के कैसे वहाँ इसको जलाइस कैसे कर दिया? इसे सामानी करण हो गया। एक तरह से आदेश को आप देखेंगे। तो इस आदेश का सामानी करण इस तरह से Mm -hmm. Sir, I want to mention one thing that I want to mention that as the Supreme Court has ordered, this is the first time you can say 9.8 million teachers across the country has been affected. This is, the number is huge. Mm -hmm. It is a matter of livelihood. And yes. Supreme Court, as far as the Supreme Court is concerned, Supreme Court has never given any order uh, that really uh, not beneficiary for the people. And the large people in the country has been benefited by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is also non for the uh, really uh, secure the loyalties and the fundamental rights of the last one people of the country. Do you think that this number is very huge? 9.8 million teachers has been affected and their livelihood is concerned. So the petition and the review, all the encounter that is going to be made, uh, I hope and uh, from your uh, parts, I want uh, that uh, some assurement that how would you say, how would you go through to the court? So, uh, of course, uh, we are completely mindful of the fact that there is a large number of persons whose livelihood is at stake. And we will definitely be placing this concern front and centre before the Supreme Court when we place our uh, review petition or any of the other petitions that will be filed on behalf of the uh, teachers. We would also take an approach where we, are, uh, where we are making it clear that we appreciate the intention of the Supreme Court where they, uh, where they want to ensure that the best quality education is imparted yeah, yeah. to the students of this country. The impact of 9.8 teachers being suddenly removed or being their promotional uh, avenues being stopped would mean that a large, large number of large number of schools would stop would functioning okay, yeah. across the country and there would be the respective states and the state boards who would be uh, placing their concern before the court and saying that 
Yeah. If so many teachers, difference. if yeah. so many teachers are removed at one go, yeah, yeah. how can I run my schools? Yeah. And what will be the impact of education on that? So while the Supreme Court has very good intentions of protecting the students and ensuring that they uh, get the best quality of education, yeah. this order may have a counterproductive effect on that intention, and we would want to place this before the court and work in an assisting and constructive manner along with the court to best reach the goals that the Supreme Court has very laudably set for itself. Okay. Now, uh, we are heading towards the submission of the petition and uh, as well as the review petition. So, it would be uh, uh, submitted today? Yes, it will be fine. Okay, that's, that is all for here and we are uh, having the most prestigious counsel from the Supreme Court and we are very assured. जो उम्र भले ही आपकी है लेकिन आपके अंदर जो चाहते हैं ये